Okay, I'm back, and uh, so far we've learned about the law of reflection and what your image looks like in a flat mirror. Well, it is possible to take a mirror and to bend it. Now, I'm not going to bend this very far because I don't want to break my mirror, but if you can see my reflection in there, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bow it out towards me, and then I'm going to bow it in towards me. And can you see how my image is kind of shifting as I bend it? So there are two kinds of curved mirrors. A concave mirror and a convex mirror. So what I need for you to do is to go to the internet and find an image of a concave mirror and find an image of a convex mirror. Okay, so you know which one's which? Okay, you're going to need to know that because now we're going to use our spoon. So here's my spoon, and one side of this is going to be concave, and one side of this is going to be convex. And I'm not going to tell you which side is which. Okay, so you're going to take your spoon, and let's say, for example, we're going to use this side of the spoon as our mirror. So this is either concave or convex. You should know if you've looked it up on, on the internet. You're going to look into the back of this mirror and then you're going to record is your image right side up or is it upside down and is it large or is it small. Okay, then you're going to uh, take your finger and you're going to move it towards the spoon and you're going to observe what happens to your finger. Okay. Then you're going to flip it around. So now you've got your mirror like this. And you're going to again look into it and write down is your image right side up or is it upside down and then is it large or is it small and then you're going to take your finger and you're going to again move it towards the uh, spoon and this time something should happen and I won't tell you what's going to happen but again is it right side up is it upside down is it large or is it small um, okay so that is that experiment and we're now ready to do refraction. So the, the two experiments that we've done was for plane reflection and curved reflection. So now we want to talk about plane refraction. Now in the lab it says to use a uh, a piece of plastic that is uh, rectangular and then what you're going to do is you take the rectangular piece of plastic like this you're going to stick a pencil behind it so that you're looking at it like this okay and then you're looking at it from this direction and you should be able to see that the pencil is broken now if you don't have a piece of plastic shape like that, which I don't expect you to do, you can do the exact same thing with an aquarium. So that if you take your pencil and you hold it behind the aquarium and then you move your head back and forth, you should notice that that pencil will look like it's broken, the part of the pencil that is under the water. So try that. Now, if you don't have an aquarium, okay, you can still do this with like a glass. So get a glass, fill it up with water, take a pencil, put it into the water, and you should notice that the pencil makes a certain angle going into the water, but then the pencil looks like it's broken slightly in the water. So again, that's an example of refraction. 
Okay, so in the same way that we can um, take a flat piece of, of mirror and bend it so it's either concave or convex, uh, it's what we do with the glass or plastic is we carve it and we can carve it into two kinds of shapes we can make a converging lens or a diverging lens so I need for you to go onto the internet and find a picture of a converging lens and a picture of a diverging lens and then to find out which one of them is in a magnifying glass. Is it the converging lens or the diverging lens? So just do a little research on Google. Okay, you done it? Okay, because we are going to take a magnifying glass, so now we're down to part four of the lab, which is on curved refraction and we are going to use our magnifying glass so you need to go outside with your magnifying glass let's say that the sun is over here okay you're going to hold the magnifying glass you'll need to tilt it and you'll need to tilt it this way so that you get the light going through the magnifying glass and then it makes a bright spot on the ground so you're going to need to move it back and forth like this in order to do it. So manipulate the magnifying glass until you get a very bright spot of light on the ground. You're going to measure that distance. So you need to measure the distance from the center of the magnifying glass down to that bright spot. Do not measure the horizontal or the vertical distance. And for that matter, don't measure the horizontal distance. You measure the diagonal distance down to that bright spot. That's going to be the focal length of your magnifying glass. Measure it in centimeters. Now, if you got just a regular ruler and it only is in inches, let's say it's 5 inches, you could go to Google, type in 5, I, N, and then CM next to it, and it will convert it from inches to centimeters. But one way or another, you need to know the focal length of your lens in centimeters. Okay, so now uh, you're going to go back inside, and you are going to assemble figure 17.4, a lens system. And so let me stop the video here, and then when we come back, we're going to discuss how to set up that system and then how to use it.